Section 3.5 is the last section of Chapter 3 that we're going to cover this year. It's titled Equation Solving and Modeling, which I know is a pretty vague title. Uh, specifically, what we're going to look at is how do we solve exponential equations and how do we solve logarithmic equations. Uh, now that we've finally got the mathematics that will allow us to solve the equations that we solve from Section 3.1 and 3.2, uh, the logarithms being the key, uh, we're going to go over how to solve a variety of those equations that, so we can go back and do those mathematical modeling problems um, and solve them with algebra instead of with the graphing calculators. It's kind of where we're going in this lesson. Now we're going to begin with a couple of examples of exponential equations uh, that you actually don't need logarithms to solve. Uh, we could have solved these particular equations. They could have been shown to you before we got into this chapter dealing with logarithms. Um, so let me show you how to do an equation where we don't need logarithms. Um, what we're going to do is change the base or change the bases so they are the same. Okay. Um, so we're going to make the bases the same number. Now, what are the bases? The bases are 3 and 27. So I want those numbers to be identical. So typically what we do is we take the larger number and we rewrite it as a power of the smaller number. Okay, so I'm going to leave 3 to the 2x alone. And I'm going to change 27. 27 is the same as 3 cubed. And so instead of 27 being raised to the x minus 1, I've got 3 cubed raised to the x minus 1. Okay, so that is now 3 raised to the 2x equal to 3 raised to the 3x minus 3. Okay, again, let's not forget our exponent rules, our exponent properties. Here, these are going to multiply together. Okay. Well, what happens now is that if the bases are the same, okay, so if bases same, that implies the powers are the same. Okay, so I've got the same base on each side. I've got 3 and 3. So what that implies then is that the power of 2x is equivalent to the power of 3x minus 3. And we now have an equation to solve that doesn't involve exponents anymore. So we can now solve this equation. I move the 3x over so we get negative x equals negative 3 and for x equals 3. And we're solved. Okay, so that's, again, that's an exponential equation without logarithms. We make the bases be the same number, and once they're the same number, we set the powers equal to each other and solve that equation. Okay, I decided to just go with one example uh, of the first type where we can solve without logarithms. So let's jump to this next slide here. I'm going to show you how to solve an exponential equation with logarithms. Now, you might ask, why would I use logarithms here? Or how would I know that I need to use logarithms? Well, I know that I need to use logarithms here because I can't make the bases the same. Here's a base of 5. Here's a base of 21. And so I know I need to use logarithms because I can't rewrite 21 as 5 raised to a power. Okay, uh, at least, you know, an integer power, you know, simple math, mental math sort of power. Um, so when I can't do that, when I can't make the bases match, then I'm going to use logarithms to solve the problem. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a logarithm of each side. Now, what type of logarithm you take is totally up to you. You can take a log base 10, you can take um, a natural log, you can do any logarithm. I would recommend you use one of the logarithms whose buttons are on your calculator for calculation purposes later on. I typically just use the natural log, 
Um, I just like writing it better. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Take a natural log of both sides. Okay. Now, why would I do that? How does this actually help me? Because it looks like I've just made the equation worse. Looks like there's more to do now. Okay, well we've got this property of logarithms that says any exponent can move to the front of the logarithm. Okay, that's important because once I do that, once I do that, well there's no more exponent to deal with. Now I'm trying to solve this equation for x, and it's actually a quite simple equation to solve for x now. Um, to solve for x, uh, notice that the 3 and the natural log of 5 are multiplying the x. So I just need to divide by 3 and natural log of 5 over to this side. So we get x equals natural log of 21 divided by natural log of 5. Now if you want an exact answer, or if you need an exact answer, you have it. If you want an approximate answer, well you can type into your calculator natural log of 21 divided by natural log of 5, and again I would use four decimal places, and I would get 1.8917. So whether you want an exact or approximate answer, we have them both now. So again, that's the process I take um, whenever I can't make the bases match. Okay. Alright, that first example was rather easy to do. Let me give you an example of one that would be about as hard as I could give you. Uh, it's challenging because the exponents are written as binomials. Um, and as you'll see as we get into it, kind of the work that's involved, you'll understand why then uh, when you see a problem of this type. Um, but I'm going to begin the same way. I'm going to start with a natural log of both sides. Okay, and so for each of these natural logs, their powers go to the front of them. Now since those powers are binomials, we have to write them in parentheses. So this is going to be quantity x plus 3 times natural log of 3 equals quantity 2 minus x times natural log 11. Now I'm trying to solve for x, and right now the x is trapped inside the parentheses. So what I have to do is to clear the parentheses, I'm going to distribute natural log 3, I'm going to distribute natural log 11, on this side. So I now have x times natural log of 3 plus 3 natural log of 3 equals 2 natural log 11 minus x natural log of 11. Okay. So now let's kind of think about what do we do when we're solving equations. I'm trying to solve for x. That means I need to get all the x's on the same side of the equal sign. So, what I'm going to do is move this x, it's going to move over here, and this term that doesn't have the x, it's going to move to this side. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of swap sides by changing signs of these terms, and so now we have x natural log of 3 plus x natural log 11 equals 2 natural log of 11 minus 3 natural log 3. Okay. Well now the x is in both of these terms. Okay, we see x here and x here, so x is a common factor. I'm going to take that x and factor it out. So it looks like this. x times quantity natural log of 3 plus natural log 11 equals 2 natural log of 11 minus 3 natural log 3 and to finish solving this problem, we need to just now divide both sides by natural log of 3 plus natural log of 11, that quantity. Okay. Now, we're not going to do that 
without the calculator, but if we wanted our exact value, let me rewrite it up higher so we can see, uh, x is equal to 2 natural log 11 minus 3 natural log 3 over natural log of 3 plus natural log of 11. Okay, that's our exact answer. If we want an approximate answer, well, we could type this into the calculator and be careful with parentheses. We're going to have to open parentheses for the numerator. And then when we hit divide, we're going to have to open parentheses for the denominator. And when I do that, I get an answer of 0 0.4. Two nine zero. Okay, so there's my approximate answer. All right, one more exponential equation that I want to show. I want to show you how to do one that's got an e in it. Um, well, whenever I have a problem with e, first thing I'm going to do is try and get the e all by itself. So I'm going to try and get to this e raised to the x plus four equals. Okay, so any number that's on the same side as the e, I'm going to get rid of that number. So in this particular problem, I'm going to divide by 7. So 56 divided by 7 is 8. Okay, after I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is use the logarithms like I've been doing. So I'm going to take a natural log of e raised to the x plus 4 equals natural log of 8. Now there's no need to think of this like we've been doing in the past that the exponent comes to the front because what do we know is true of natural log and e? Natural log and e cancel each other out so this is now just x plus 4 equals natural log of 8 and I can solve that by subtracting 4 from both sides so we get x equals natural log of 8 minus 4. Again, that's our exact answer. If I want an approximate answer, I'm going to do natural log of 8, close parentheses, and then minus 4, so I get negative 1 point, I'm going to go with 9, 2, 0, 6. Okay, so I've got exact and approximate answers. All right, now I want to show you how can we solve equations that already involve logarithms in them called logarithmic equations. And what I'm going to do is a process called exponentiating the equation. I'm going to rewrite the equation um, in its exponential form. Okay, um, So here's how I do it. Um, this natural log 4x equals 1. Um, first of all, what we need to be able to identify is what's the base of this logarithm. The base of this logarithm is e. So what I do is rewrite it like this. e raised to the natural log 4x equals e raised to the first power. So what we see is the natural log 4x equals 1, which was the original equation. I've just placed an e underneath each side. Now what that allows me to do is cancel this out because they're inverses of each other and we're left with 4x equals e to the first which is just e and if I solve this by dividing by 4 get x equals e over 4 and that's an exact answer if I want an approximate answer I'm going to take e to the first divided by 4 on the calculator Get zero point. I'm gonna go with six, seven, nine, six, rounded to four decimal places. Okay, so there it is, a natural log, and I'm using e to get rid of that natural log. On this next problem, it's not a natural log; it's a log base ten. So what I'm gonna do is exponentiate both sides above ten. Okay, so that ten cancels the logarithm and I have 3x equals 10 squared which is 100 so x equals 100 over 3 
Okay? No need to make that a decimal because that's a, a rational number. It's an exact value as it is, so 100 thirds. Okay, this next one I want to show you what do you do when you have an equation that has more than one logarithm. So we've got two logarithms on the same side of the equal sign. These two logarithms need to be combined into one logarithm. And the sign between them tells us how to do that. When we have logarithms that are being added together, then the rule is that we multiply like this. Okay, so that is now natural log of x squared plus 3x equals 1. Okay, so how do we get rid of that natural log? We just saw it on the last slide. What I do is I place an e underneath both sides. That e cancels the natural log. So we now have x squared plus 3x equals e. Since it's a quadratic equation, I make it equal to zero, and then we attempt to solve this. So how do we solve quadratic equations? Um, well, we can factor them. And we're not going to factor with e, because yeah, it's an irrational number. If we can't factor the quadratic equation, we use quadratic formula. Okay, so quadratic formula then is this. I'm going to do it up here at the top of the slide. x equals negative 3 plus minus square root 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times c, which is negative e, all over 2 times 1. So we get negative 3 plus minus the square root of 9 plus 4e, all over 2. And I'm going to use the calculator now to approximate my solutions. Um, I'm going to do negative 3 plus this square root over 2. So let's do that. And if I do that, I get 0 0.7, let's see, 290. And I'm going to do the subtraction also. I have to do the minus of the plus minus. I do that, I get negative 3.7290. Okay, so there's my answer. So, why did I only box one answer? Why is this not an answer? It's a good question. Um, let's think back to the very beginning of section 3.3 when we were looking at graphing uh, this log function. If we look at a log function, the graph of a log function, whether it be log base 10, natural log, log base 2, you know, whatever it is, its graph looks like this. Notice that the domain of a log function is 0 to infinity. Okay. In other words, it's not possible for me to take, so I'm looking at the equation right here, let's look at this term. It's not possible for me to have the natural log of negative 3.7290, this answer. Okay. In fact, if you tried to type this in on the calculator, see, doesn't like it, can't do it. Uh, it's a non-real value. Um, so I throw this answer away because it's not in the domain of the log function. Um, so it must be excluded. It's called an extraneous solution, and we've heard that before. But that's why. So. I can only take logarithms of positive numbers, so I kept this one, I threw away the other one. Okay, last problem. It looks rather challenging, but as you're going to find, it's probably the easiest one of the bunch. Uh, we've got a logarithm on each side. It's a log base 10. 
Um, there's no need to bring them to the same side and to try and combine them into a single logarithm since it's the only term on each side of the equation. It's a log base 10, so I'm going to raise it up above a 10 on each side. That cancels each side's respective logarithm. And we have x minus 6 is 2x plus 1. So I'm going to solve this for x. I'm going to bring the 2x here, bring the 6 here. So we get negative x equals, that's going to become positive 7. So x equals negative 7. Now we got an x value of negative 7. If we were to substitute that in for the x's in the problem, we end up with log negative 13 equal to log negative 13. It would appear that they are the same on each side. However, log of negative 13 um, does not exist. Neither does that one. Um, so in fact, over real numbers, there is no solution to this problem. So I'm going to throw this away and say that actually we have no solution. And in fact, if you graph these two functions, and I'll do that, like if I were to type this into the y1 and this in for the y2, and here's just kind of a sampling of what it looks like. I've adjusted the windows a little bit, um, but this is going on the x-axis out to 10,000 already. And you can see that these functions don't intersect. And you might think, well, yeah, they intersect way out over here, but they actually don't uh, intersect way out over there. If I change the window to go back to like 10 and graph it, well, you can see that over there close to the y-axis, they don't intersect. They don't come close to intersecting. So these two functions have no intersection point, or these two uh, equations have no intersection point um, at all. So there is no solution to this problem.